YouTube. So today I wanted to show you my new monitor. And from the B-roll in the beginning, you can see it is a LG ultra wide 34 inch monitor that I got. And I actually got this for my birthday from my grandparents. So thank you very much, grandma and grandpa. So now thanks to this monitor being so wide at 34 inches, I'll be able to improve my editing workflow just because I can see a lot more of what's going on at one time. Whereas with a double monitor setup, there's kind of the bezel in the middle and it splits your screen up. So you can't get the long timeline across when you're editing a video. And so this was the main reason for me wanting this monitor. And I'm sure it's gonna be the same for any one of you out there looking to get ultra wide. And if not, you might be a gamer just looking for a different perspective. So some of the best features of this monitor include the 160 Hertz refresh rate, which is on the higher side of monitors these days. A lot of the ultra wide monitors will not even do 120 Hertz, um, but there are some that will go higher even to like 240 Hertz, which would be more of a gaming oriented monitor probably. But for a video editor, uh, 160 Hertz is plenty. And this display also is 10-bit or 8-bit and dithering, so sort of a workaround to get 10-bit, I guess. So this would be an HDR display and it'll show a greater dynamic range of colors. So you'll get a larger contrast between darks and highlights. And of course, the 34-inch display is one of the bigger highlights of this monitor. So it is actually ultra-wide UHD. So it's 3440 by 1440. A lot of other monitors are 2160 by 1080. So it's actually like a stretched full HD, which does not look nearly as good when you have it on a 34-inch display. Just you can start to see all the pixels. So you can still see the pixels on this, but only if you're really close. And for video editing and general use just watching youtube videos that type of stuff you're not you're not even going to notice so this aspect ratio is actually 21 by 9 rather than the traditional 16 by 9 so it's definitely a, a lot wider but the basically the ratio is the same height but the width is just stretched out and this monitor is also a curved va panel so if you know anything about panels IPS is usually the standard, like the, the go-to panel. VA would be probably second place and then TN panel. And the way I'm ranking that is basically just off of the colors and the viewing angle you can get, as well as potentially just the, the consistency across the panel. So IPS panels generally are the best for all around purpose use. VA panels are really good though in terms of having a high contrast ratio. So from your blacks again to your whites, you're going to have a really good dynamic range, which IPS panels usually do too, but the VA panels are really good at that. But one problem that a lot of people were talking about with ultra wides is basically having um, kind of in the corners of the display, having slightly different colors than where you're actually looking in the center. And honestly, I haven't really noticed this myself that much with this monitor. So it, maybe it's either my monitor in particular or just, um, I just haven't caught it on my own eyes. The viewing angles are okay with the monitor, but for, again, for a video editor, it's like, I'm just sitting here staring straight at the monitor. I'm not gonna be sitting off to the side or showing, you know, maybe if I'm showing a friend an edit or something like that, but most of the time I'm editing here by myself. And when I show someone else, it's either gonna be on social media, so it's gonna be on a phone of something I've already edited or some other means of viewing. It's not gonna be on my mind. So for those reasons, so far in my experience, general media consumption, um, if you're in, you know not like a competitive FPS shooter type of player for in terms of gaming, and if you're just doing video editing and that type of stuff, this monitor does everything as good as you could ask for, especially for the price. At $400, there's, you'd be hard pressed to find this many features and this quality in another monitor. It's one of the best for that price in my opinion. And so for an extra $80, I actually found this monitor arm that you can get on Amazon and it has a 26 pound weight limit and it's pretty well built from what it seems. Um, I actually don't have this one. I have a stand made by Newer, which is meant to be a two monitor stand. And I've kind of adapted it in my own way to make it fit my one monitor. And it works, but I'm not that confident in how sturdy it is because it is kind of meant for two lighter monitors, smaller monitors. And also I don't get very good um, adjustability with that because of the way it's designed. I will probably be investing in this monitor stand somewhere down the road here just to have better articulation, take up a little less room on my desk. And also it's kind of nice that it has some USB ports that you can plug in to charge your phone or some other devices. For me personally, that would be great because I can plug in my GoPro battery charger right there, or I can plug in my phone, lots of other things I can plug in. Just having all the FPV gear, I'm constantly plugging things in, charging and stuff. So 
that'd be perfect to have that feature as well. But like I said, I don't actually have this, so I can't, I can't attest to the quality of it, um, but it has good ratings and from the comments below, it seems sturdy and that's exactly the point of this monitor stand was to have like a strong, solid built monitor stand. So I'll recommend it for the price in here, but I can't, don't take my word for the quality on it because I, I can't attest to it. So yeah, this is kind of the best all around monitor in my opinion right now for about the $400 price range. Um, there's not a lot of other monitors out there that have this many features at this quality. And you know it's LG, so they're a big company and they've been doing displays for a while now and they're they're known for their quality. Yeah, in my opinion, if you're doing video editing, you're looking to upgrade your monitor um, to an ultra wide or just to have maybe another monitor to look at, I think this is gonna be a good alternative to having a, a double or triple monitor set up specifically for video editing. If you're someone who's doing gaming, you might wanna look at other options, but even still, I think this is a great option since the ghosting which is usually seen on VA panels is quite minimal on this panel. I can notice it sometimes, but it's not nearly as bad as what people tend to exaggerate. So yeah, I definitely recommend this monitor. So for anyone who's interested in FPV drones, make sure to go check this video out because I kind of go over the cost that's associated with getting into FPV drones and basically how much money it would cost you to get into the hobby and start making videos of your own. So yeah, if that's interesting, go ahead and watch that video. And otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll see you in the next video, and hopefully, hopefully you stick around, subscribe, and give me a like, and potentially give me some comments down below so I can see, read your feedback and uh, let me know what you think about the monitor if you have it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.